this example, we're going to be using data from two spreadsheets. So using the value of category, and that's going to check the tax table and return back the corresponding tax rate. We're going to do the calculation. So here's going to be one example. We're calculating the, ca the tax uh, row by row using the value of the tax rate and getting the value from the table, from that's a separate sheet, and then multiplying the quantity and the price. And then here we've got one final total that's going to be doing the same as all three of these, except it's just going to be using the ranges of values that are within the spreadsheet and returning that back. Go ahead and open up your spreadsheet. And in this example, we're going to need to have two sheets within the spreadsheet. The first one is going to contain the values that we have. So we've got item, quantity, price, and then the tax category. And then we're going to use this value here, which is currently a string value, and we're going to match it into the tax table and then return back the value that's the tax rate and make the calculation for the cost. So that's all going to be coming up in this lesson. So first of all, we need to get the data from the second table, which is going to be the tax table. Under extensions, open up App Scripter, and that's your App Script editor. And we're going to create a customized function that's going to get the tax rate. And getting the tax rate, we need the one parameter, which is going to be the category. And this is going to be expecting a string value that's going to get passed in. So what we want to do is we want to select the sheet data. So selecting the sheets object and using the spreadsheet app service, we get the active sheet. And then we want to get the actually sheet within the spreadsheet that we want to use. And we can use the get sheet by name. And using the sheet with the name of tax table so that we can return that object. And right now within the app script, we're going to use the logger log to see what data that we're returning back as we test out this application. So go ahead and run the function. If you haven't accepted permissions, you're going to have to accept permissions. And what this does is returns back a sheet object. So the sheet object is going to be this particular sheet object where we've got the tax rate and we're going to be making the comparison. So once we have that, we want to get the data that's contained within there. So we can use the a data variable and then select the sheets and then get the data range from the sheets. And this is actually from the sheets object. That's why uh, it wasn't showing up because it's a plural. So get the data range. And the data range returns back all the available data within the spreadsheet, so within uh, columns and all of the rows. And then in order to return it back into a usable format, we just get the values. And this is going to return it back within an array format. I'm actually going to update this to say tax table. So that's the sheet data that we're getting. And then we're selecting that and putting it into the log. So go ahead and run the function again. And this is going to return back the content that we have within the sheet. So we can actually create a separate function. And I usually like to do this in order to run tests on the different functions that I have. So the get tax rate is going to be a helper function that we're going to use within the formula. So within the logger log, we're going to return back the results of the get tax rate. So the dex tax rate is going to be returning back a value. And in the last formula, we're going to be using that in order to make a calculation. So right now, within the categories, uh, let's select out that we're going to use category 2. So it's going to be looking for a string value of category 2. And that's what we're going to be passing in. And then it's uh, returning back. The result here is going to be the tax rate that we're returning back. So let's set a value. So we want to set a default value of tax. And I'll set that to just to be a value of zero. So if nothing is found, if there's no matching values, then we can set it at zero. And I'm going to use for the tax table. So we can use a for loop, but we can also use a for each to loop through each one of the items of the array. And then returning back the value. And the value that's going to get returned back here, so this is going to be a value that's going to be the array for the particular row. And for now, I'll just output the value into the log so that we can take a closer look and see what gets returned back. So each one of the rows returns back the values that are associated for the entire row. 
And this is including the heading. You can remove out the heading if you want, uh, starting it at the second item. So there's an option there, or we're just going to keep this in because we're just going to be matching that particular value with what we're looking for within the column. So it's not going to be affecting what we're doing in this exercise. So going into that for loop, we want to return back the check the first column value. So it's going to have an index value of zero against the value for the string of the category. And if it's a match, then we're going to populate the value of tax with whatever is the second value, so the second column value. So let's go into here and add in our condition. So checking to see if val zero, so that's the first item there in the first column, is equal to category. And if it is, and if you want to use a numeric value, you can just use the one equal sign there, so you can have a string and a number value. Uh, I'll leave it at 1, and it's up to you to customize it as needed. And if this is true, then we're going to return back to tax whatever the value of 0 of the first item in the index is. For category, and we're checking to see if the val 0 is equal to category. And if it is, then we're setting the value of tax to val 0, uh, val with the first index. Let's output these values in the logger so we can do a little bit of debugging here. And I'll just uh, add this in with a uh, plus sign. So it concatenate the string output within the log. So we're getting undefined for the value of category. And let's see what's happened here where we're not getting the value passed in and that's because we're not using the test function. So now when we use the test function, we get the corresponding value being returned back, which is a 0 0.5 for a category 2. And we can try this as well with category 3. And that should return back a 0 0.8. So that's returning back the right value. We no longer need the logger values there. So that was just for debugging. So now we're ready to add the final formula that's going to be using whatever is being returned back from the get tax rate and that's going to be outputting the value within the first column there. So that's going to be returning back the cost. So let's set this up where we're going to have the quantity and multiplied by the price. And that's going to return back the total cost. And then we're going to use the tax category in order to multiply and return back the tax rate. That's going to be applied to this particular value. So calculate and just underscore total tax. We're going to be expecting a few parameters here. So we need the, we can get the item, we can get uh, quantity, price, category. So let's add all of those in where we've got the item, we've got the price, we've got the category, and actually we should have, keep it in the same order. So we've got quantity, price, and category. And lastly, the category. So that's going to return those values into the function. And let's, uh, for now, we're just going to return back a value of zero. Let's take these values and we're going to apply the formula within the formula bar to the cell that we want to have the output to. And then we can populate these values by just comma separating them. And it should return back a value of zero. So let's update this where we can actually do a calculation for the quantities, and then we'll return back that total value there, where we're going to send in to get the tax rate category. So that should return all of those values. And let's set up a value for tax rate. And then we're using the string value of category. And let's uh, do a return back right now for the tax rate as we're building this out. So this is just simply returning back the corresponding tax rate to the categories. So just double check to make sure that that's correct. And this is how you can use a separate sheet and get the data from the sheet. So next we just need to f multiply the quantity by the price and then we multiply it by the tax rate in order to return back a total. So let's do that where we've got the quantity multiplied by the price and then we're multiplying it by the tax rate. And that's going to return back the total. And then it's just as easy as placing the total there 
within the tax calculation. So that's returning back the total number of, of the total value of the tax rate. Uh, so we want to have a subtotal as well. And then we can add the subtotal to the total. So the subtotal is going to be before tax rate. So let's take the quantity times the price. And of course, you can add in additional values as needed. And it's going to add the tax rate. And then we're going to add a subtotal to it. So that should return back a new value. So 5 times 10 is 50. We're using category 3 tax rate, which is 8%. So that's returning back a total of 54 for the value. And so for in order to total all of those values, we can do a sum or we can do a customized formula that's going to do a total calculation. Uh, so let's do that and calculate the final total. And here we're going to get all of these values. And th this one we can expect uh, the array values and we'll just multiply out the same thing that we have here so using the various ranges of data and then we'll calculate that final total for there so grab this and this is just an example of how you can use the ranges in order to get the values that you need so if you do want to use the ranges that's also an option so the first range that we have was the quantity range. Second range we had was the price. And third range was the category. So right now it's not returning anything back. So let's uh, add the return. And what we want to return back is the total. So let's set up a value to track the total. And we'll return back the total value, which right now should be 0. So we're returning back 0. And now let's make our calculations. So we, we can loop through using a typical for loop. So let the value of i equals 0. And while i is less than the length of... And we've got... Can use any one of these ranges? Uh, so we just use the quantity. We could also pass in that first range in order to get a length. And that's just returning back the length property. So as we loop through here, we want to get those same values that we have here in order to construct the total. And I'll update the value instead of saying total twice. So what we want to do is first we want to get the tax rate. So we can use the value of cat using its index value. And then we want to multiply the quantity with its index value times the price with its index value. And this is going to be the total. So we're taking the value of total and we're adding to it whatever we have for subtotal, tax rate, and subtotal. So that should return back the final total. And when we go back in here, we get 149.75. When we add these three together, we also get 149.75. And then you can also customize the formula as needed. So this was just another example of how you can use the sheet data, and, and in this time we're just using the different ranges of values.